Well, good evening. Glad that you are here this evening. And we're glad that uh, we have the Nalties here as well. Looking forward to their ministry with us tonight. Page 512 in your songbooks, please. 512 as we begin. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Will you stand with me, please? Let's sing a few verses of 512. Because you can't sing redeemed without. I mean, we're taught in music school not to sing your E's with uh, East and West, but North and South. Redeemed. But this isn't music school, this is church. No offense to you, musicians. So sing redeemed with a smile. Not, not, not hard to do. All right, second verse. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever. songs in the night redeemed 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 by the blood of the lamb redeemed redeemed his child and forever I am let's pray this evening Father what a blessed truth to know that we have been bought purchased by the blood of the Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he has washed away all our sin, buried them in the deepest sea, removed them as far as the east is from the west. And Lord, because of that wonderful truth, we will indeed one day soon, I believe, see our Savior face to face. And for all of eternity, we will sing the song of the redeemed. And we thank you for that truth. And Lord, we thank you for Young couples uh, like the Nalties who are uh, preparing and willing to go to other parts of the world to tell the wonderful truth of the redemption that is found in Jesus Christ. We pray your blessing upon his ministry with us here this evening. And uh, Lord, may we catch his vision and may we uh, learn how to pray effectively for them. And Lord, bless them as they are just beginning their, their deputation and travels, that uh, you'll bless their ministry. And uh, Lord, may you help each one here this evening to enjoy the service and to uh, be thrilled with the opportunity that we have to be in the house of God in this middle of the week service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Page 340, I'm informed uh, in the sound booth that our internet is a little uh, sketchy tonight. So those of you who might be watching from home, you might be watching from home. You might be watching from home. You might be watching, and then it'll kick in, and you'll be able to catch up. So hopefully, uh, we're going to be able to uh, get that taken care of. Uh, but anyways, we're glad that you're here tonight. 344, 344, just a chorus, maybe a new chorus. I hope it's not too new that uh, we can't sing it, but I think we know it. After all he's done for me, after all he's done for me, how can I do less than give him my best? After all he's done for me. Isn't it a great thought? And uh, so let's sing it through a couple times. And uh, let's rejoice in this wonderful truth in the little course that we have. After all he's done for me, after all he's done for me, how can I do less than give him my best and sleep? After all he's done for me, I didn't even 
you get the words out and live for him completely once again. After all he's done for me, after all he's done for me, how can I do less than give him my best and live for him completely? After all he's done for me. Now we're going to do one more time and we're going to see how well you can do this without the music, okay? The end of the song goes, after all he's done for me, only we're going to... We're going to go up the scale. After all he's done for me. That's called falsetto, gentlemen. All right? And ladies, no problem. You can get up there. All right, let's see what happens. All we're doing is singing an octave pretty much. Here we go. Every break again. After all he's done for me. After all he's done for me. How can I do less than give him my best and live for him completely? After all he's done for me. Very good. You're great students, great learners. And thank you for singing. Thank you, Angela, for playing tonight. Well, I hope you have your prayer bulletin with you. Let's just make a few couple of comments uh, before we turn it over to our missionary this evening. As you can see, a couple of new ones, recent uh, ones that have just been added. Uh, Brother Rich is here tonight, but he has a uh, sinus surgery tomorrow. Please be praying for that to go well. Uh, pray for Arlene. You can see a, a very uh, heavy heart uh, and spoken request uh, in her family. So talk to her today, and, and uh, as Kathy did well, uh, pray, for, pray for Arlene. Pray for Sharon, another uh, addition, uh, oral surgery, some pretty significant oral surgery on uh, Thursday uh, in a couple of weeks, so pray for, uh, pray for her. So these are some, and of course we're praying for these others who are uh, recovering from recent surgeries and uh, are still uh, in, you know, experiencing some pain perhaps in recovery time. Uh, of course we need to be praying for those who were killed in Illinois. You know, we got a, a notice uh, to put our flags at half staff. I'm afraid we could keep it down. Every week there's a mass shooting somewhere. Why even put it back to full staff? I mean, every week they're asking for a half staff. It's incredible. We live in a world where the sanctity of life is, is nothing. We have people that are running around with uh, evil intent. Um, and, and we just need to pray for our country uh, and, and certainly pray for these families who uh, at a 4th of July parade uh, will never be the same and uh, pray for the communities, pray for the pastors in that area who are dealing with the people and the churches. So pray for them, and of course, uh, folks still suffering from the events um, in Texas and around the country, these are happening all around the place. Even here in Minneapolis, there were some who were hurt as a result of some shooting uh, on July 4th. Pray for our junior campers. We have 20 at this point going to Camp Chatech, 20 junior campers next week. And my wife and I are looking forward to uh, being there with them and uh, be praying for uh, the revival, uh, the evangelists that will be there. Pray for the campers as we leave on Monday. Travel be no problems with the coach bus that we'll be taking. Also regarding camp, Iselli is uh, there. And, of course, she was here Sunday and reports that she's having a great time as a counselor there at Chatech. So continue to pray for her. And, of course, pray for these other needs that they're on your list. On the right-hand column, a number of folks that we've been praying for for some time, and we will continue to do so. If there are any updates on the physical needs or the spiritual needs, uh, we'd like to hear from you. If there's anything you'd like to share particular uh, to these names that we can pray, or maybe you believe we can take the names off because the Lord's answered the prayer uh, situation. Anybody like that? All right. Yes, Diane? Um, this isn't for the, a name that's on the list, but um, evangelist Ronnie Rice that preached to the deaf all over the world passed away on Saturday. So be praying for him and for the Bill Rice Ranch with, um, with his home going that, that the gospel will still go forth Amen. and that the Lord will comfort their hearts. Evangelist Ronnie Rice was a deaf evangelist and God really, really used him certainly there in Murphy's Brio at uh, Bill Rice Ranch, but uh, certainly uh, around the world. Thank you for reminding us or letting us know that, Diane. Let's pray for the camp and pray for the family of Ronnie Rice. Anybody else? Any other prayer requests that we can add 
or any updates to the physical or spiritual needs of those that are here? Any unspoken requests to add to the list? Yes, Lana Freeberg, thank you. Let's uh, add a unspoken to Lana's name there. Very good. All right. Yes, Barb Nagy. Let's uh, unspoken for Barb Nagy. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. All right, Brother Steve. Thank you, Steve. Let's pray for Steve Schissel. Pete. That's what I said, Pete. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Pastor, maybe you could put down uh, God's will. Um, okay. Seeking God's will. I, we can do that. Thanks, Pete. Sorry about that. Sorry. Pete, seeking God's will. Let's uh, pray that God will indeed show Pete uh, what he would have him do. Good. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you so much for those on the back side. A couple of updates from recent missionary letters that have just come in. These are a couple of our newer ones, I should say. Probably in the last uh, four years, we've taken these two on, and so pray for them. And uh, the uh, folks, uh, the Pates heading to the Ivory Coast, they're actually going to Canada for language school, French-speaking area. So they're going up to Canada, as you can see. And uh, pray for these other uh, the Hansons. There in Panama. On the front side, of course, folks we're praying for all the time are uh, political uh, leaders uh, in Washington, even here in Minnesota. Pray for uh, the staff, uh, your church, the school, and uh, these shut ins, your deacons. Pray for all of this. Regular services on Sunday, Sunday school, Sunday morning, evening service. This, eve this, uh, this Sunday night, Missionary John Summer will be with us. John Summer to Ghana, West Africa. He'll be here. Uh, uh, he'll be here all day. By the way, he'll be here Sunday morning, uh, Sunday school, and then, uh, but just preaching and presenting his ministry Sunday night. And uh, but he wants to be here uh, all day to uh, visit with you. And uh, I have family in town uh, Sunday, and so I won't have the privilege of taking this missionary family to lunch on Sunday. So first come, first serve. After the service Sunday morning, it'd be nice to take them out. Uh, or have them in, and uh, you let me know, and uh, if you'd like to do that, that would be a real blessing. Uh, otherwise, I would, otherwise I would, and I have taken these missionaries out, and I enjoy the fellowship. But if you can, let me know, and we'll uh, be glad to uh, let you do that. They have four girls, I believe, and I'm not sure how old they are, but a uh, family of six, and I think they're all coming, so uh, you let me know if you can help in that way. That'd be great. All right, any other requests that come to your mind just before we let Brother Luke loose? Yes, sir. Just for God's uh, blessing and protection as we drive, our reputation just for every provision and protection. Absolutely. I hope that you'll pick up a prayer card from Luke and Selena as they hit the trail. How many meetings have you been in? Uh, only about seven so far. Seven? <laughs> Rookies. We are delighted that Woodcrest gets to be part of that first 10. Yes? Uh, pray for my boss. He's going to go to my, uh, my boss is going back to, to the Philippines to see his wife and his um, older son. So we don't really know who our new boss is yet, so it's kind of up in the air. <laughs> All right. Let's pray for Joni. Uh, her current boss is leaving that I think she has really enjoyed. New boss is coming. You don't know who it is, but you know who doesn't. We have a, right now, we just have a substitute one. So, you um, do know who the new boss You know, You know who knows. We see him, but we don't exactly. He's only going to stay till Friday. But you know who got, knows the real boss? Yeah. God, God does. does. All right. So we'll pray that uh, uh, you'll, you'll accept that new boss, and that new boss will love you like your old boss did. But uh, that's always a challenge to have a new boss come in when you don't know exactly what they're going to be like. So thank you, Joni. Let's pray for that. All right, well, it is a delight to have uh, Luke Nolte with us. Uh, most of you know the name Nolte. Um, if anybody knows John Nolte, then you know the rest of the family. And uh, John is one of those young men that uh, has never met a stranger. Um, if, if there was a stranger, by within 10 minutes, he's no longer a stranger. He's just very personable, and his children have caught that personality. Um, and so we're delighted that uh, 
Uh, Luke could be with us uh, this evening and Selena, his wife. And so, Luke, I'm going to turn the time over to you. When you want the video to be shown, just let us know. And uh, but we'd love to have you. God bless you for being here tonight. Glad you could include us on your schedule. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Well, if you don't mind, I'll start out with maybe a two-minute introduction, and then we could show our video. Uh, and then uh, if, if you have any questions afterwards, we'd love to answer those uh, after the service. Uh, but uh, my name's Luke Nalte. I actually came to Woodcrest uh, till about fourth grade. Uh, then my third brother, who was about to enter, it came a little expensive for all three uh, during the time for the family, so then we went to homeschooling. And uh, the reason we also... Uh, stopped was because we heard about half the teachers are Packers fans, so we are out. So um, now, but I, uh, I went to Woodcrest until fourth grade, as I mentioned, and and got to keep coming back every year uh, for SATs. So we we always enjoyed that time. I can see a couple teachers out as I look out in the audience, but uh, so we always enjoyed coming here for SATs and allowing uh, us to test, uh, do our testing that was required. Uh, so we'd keep up with the classmates that we had. Uh, every year and just a privilege uh, I was able to graduate uh, homeschool and then we went to Pensacola Christian College uh, a lot of the things uh, might be mentioned in the video uh, but uh, we're going to Mozambique, Africa. Uh, the language they speak there is Portuguese. Uh, so my wife actually, uh, I met at Pensacola Christian College. Uh, she speaks Spanish. Uh, she grew up on the mission field. Uh, so thankfully Spanish is very, uh, fairly close uh, to Portuguese. She already understands a lot of the Portuguese language if she reads it. Uh, so that will be helpful. She's got a head start and I got a head start as well. Uh, we were down in Honduras for almost a year. Uh, so we're excited to be here tonight. Thank you for the privilege, uh, Pastor Porman. In this uh, moment, We'll show the video. In recent years, the religion of Islam has been increasing and overcoming many countries. Several countries in Africa specifically are being engulfed by Islam as well. Consequently, there are more and more doors being closed or in danger of being closed to the gospel. However, Mozambique, Africa is still ripe soil for the seed of the Word of God to be sown right now. Three reasons for this are its current low Muslim population, its age demographics, and its poverty. Muslims currently comprise only 18% of Mozambique. These people must be reached before they are deceived by Islam's lies. Furthermore, Mozambique has a large population of youth. 46% of the population is under the age of 15 and 27% under the age of 30. That is nearly 22 million people under the age of 30. The Bible says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. If people are not reached for Christ while in their youth, there is a much higher probability that they will not accept Christ at all. There is a great need for laborers to win the souls of these countless youth. Moreover, the third indicator of Mozambique's ripeness for the gospel is its economic condition. In general, poor countries are much more receptive to the gospel than rich countries. Mozambique is a very poor country having one of the world's lowest gross domestic products. When people are not distracted by the cares and pleasures of this world, there's a better opportunity for those seeking to win them for Christ. Mozambique is ready for the gospel, but needs a host of laborers willing to obey and go. We are the Naltis, and we believe that the Lord is calling us to Mozambique. My name is Luke. I grew up in a Christian home and trusted in Christ when I was six years old. It wasn't until I was about 14 years old that I started regularly reading my Bible and praying. I am thankful for my parents' example of this to me in spending time with God. When I was about 16, I read a gripping book about evangelizing the lost. Through this book, God strongly convicted me about my need to share the gospel with the lost. God grew my faith tremendously as I learned more about Him and as I shared Him with others. Around this time as well, on May 25th, 2016, God called me to full-time ministry. I praise the Lord for His faithfulness in working on me and thereby developing my heart for missions. My name is Selena. I grew up in Honduras as a missionary kid and got saved at the age of five when my seven-year-old brother was witnessing to me. 
Since I was little, I have always desired to serve God as a missionary myself because it was such a fun thing for us. Thankfully, in 2017, Luke and I met our freshman year at Pensacola Christian College. We were both studying for the purpose of full-time ministry, I in elementary education, and Luke in pastoral ministries. We were soon married after our graduation in August of 2021. We are excited to start serving the Lord in Mozambique. This is what the Lord has laid on our hearts to do in Mozambique. To obey our precious Savior's command to go into all the world and preach the gospel, our plan is to make disciples of Jesus Christ in Mozambique. We will fulfill our ultimate mission through evangelizing, winning, baptizing, discipling, and commissioning the people we train for the ministry. Our first goal will be to start an independent, fundamental Baptist church in a highly populated area of Mozambique, developing a bus ministry and placing a heavy focus on the children and teen ministries. The bus ministry will be an invaluable tool to grow the church exponentially, bringing more and more to church as we evangelize the surrounding areas. As the Lord allows, we will start a Bible Institute to train the men and women of Mozambique for serving the Lord in the ministry. The Lord blessed my wife and I with the opportunity to serve in Honduras for 10 months with my father-in-law and brother-in-law, Samuel and Joseph Hodges. Through this time, we gained valuable practical experience from missionaries who have been on the field for over 20 years. Through this time, we observed attentively how to serve the Lord effectively on the mission field. We were involved in weekly evangelism, discipleship, bus ministry, church revitalization, Christian education, and Sunday school. We both thoroughly enjoyed our time as we served under Sam and Julie Hodges. We are excited to implement the philosophy of ministry and experience we have gained and apply it to our future ministry in Mozambique. There's a need for laborers prayer warriors, and financial supporters. Please prayerfully consider what God would have you to do to help us as we serve the Lord in Mozambique. Okay, make sure. Okay, great, everyone can hear me, I think. Well, it's a blessing to be here today. Uh... Uh, thank you once again for allowing us to show that video and allowing us to be here. Uh, if you would open up your Bibles, open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians 6. Make sure you're in 1st and not 2nd Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6. We're going to read verses 15 through 20. Let's all stand, if you would, for the reading of God's Word out of respect. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting in verse 15. We'll read together. Verses 15 through 20. Ready, begin. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let's pray. Dear God, I pray that you'll uh, bless this message. Help uh, give me great liberty as I preach your word. I pray that I'll only say those things that you want me to say, Lord. And uh, help me to say those things that you do want me to say with boldness, with love. Uh, Help me to explain it well. Uh, I pray that you'll uh, present the burden uh, that will present the burden that we have well for Mozambique. And that uh, you'll give specific applications that the Holy Spirit uh, we'll be able to work in our hearts tonight. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. 
Once again, it is a privilege to be here. This is, as I said, about uh, only our seventh church that we've been in. Uh, we tried to uh, call a bunch of Florida churches to start out, uh, but we didn't have any success. So we start with Minnesota. So you're our second option. No, but uh, it was a blessing. To actually, I wasn't planning to be uh, back with my family until maybe the end of the summer. Uh, so it was a blessing to be able to uh, come back to Minnesota and uh, to be with my family for a little while uh, as we start our deputation. So as we're in our Bibles in 1 Corinthians 6, uh, God wants us to learn something tonight. Amen? Uh, God wants you uh, to learn from this lesson in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 15 through 20. Uh, God wants you to glorify Him in your body and in your spirit. Uh, God wants you to glorify Him in your body and in your spirit. Uh, how can we do this? How and why uh, does God want us to do this? Uh, well, God wants you to glorify Him in your body and in your spirit. Three ways. Uh, three ways you can do this tonight. Glorify God in your body and your spirit. First are to surrender, to supplicate, and to soul win. So, so surrender, supplicate, and to soul win. So number one, the first way that you can glorify God in your body and your spirit to surrender your will to God. I think it is so important. Uh, we had Brother Peter mention uh, uh, surrendering his will, you know, doing, he's seeking God's will in his life. I think it is so crucial, uh, however young, however old you are, uh, that we are seeking God's will in our life. Uh, and you know, at whatever age you are, it's not just for young people. Uh, we ought to be surrendered to the will of God for our life. I love the verses in the Bible that clearly state uh, this is the will of God. Uh, there are several different places uh, where the Bible says, in everything God Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. If you're not being thankful, you're not in God's will tonight. Amen? Uh, we ought to be thankful. It's such a simple thing, but we ought to be thankful. Uh, we ought to surrender our will to God's will, uh, doing the will of God in our lives today. I think it's a great thing that we surrender our will to Him. Uh, two reasons why, uh, two reasons why we should surrender our will to God. Uh, the first is that our body is God's temple, and the second is that we are bought with a price. Look in your Bibles once again at verse 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? The first reason we ought to surrender is that our body is God's temple. Our body is God's temple. If you put your faith in Christ uh, tonight, uh, I even mentioned uh, that uh, in the video, uh, my wife said that when her seven-year-old brother uh, was witnessing to her, they were playing stuffed animals, and uh, he said, Selena, you need to put your faith in Christ. And she did. Uh, she did. Uh, you know that at that very moment, she became the temple of God. As a five-year-old, she became the temple of God. If you're here tonight, if you put your faith in Christ 30 years ago, Yesterday, uh, 20 years ago, however long ago, uh, your body is God's temple. Your body is God's temple. Uh, we ought to treat it that way. We ought to treat it uh, as it is God's temple. Uh, we look in the Old Testament. We see uh, just the, the grand, the grand uh, majesty of the Old Testament, uh, the Old, tes uh, the old uh, Temple. Just all the, uh, the, the silver instruments that were required, the gold instruments, the, the measurements. Uh, well, our body is God's temple. Uh, just, as, just as holy as that temple was, we ought to treat our body as the temple of God. We ought to treat it as it is holy. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. God is holy. He wants His children, His temple. The people that are walking around as ambassadors of him. He wants them to be holy as well. Uh, I've never met uh, the ambassador of the United States or the ambassador of France, uh, the ambassador of different countries. Uh, but if you were to be the ambassador here tonight, I don't know if there's, are there any ambassadors here tonight of the UN, anyone here? Uh, maybe would like to meet you afterwards. Uh, but if you were the ambassador of the United States of America, every word you say... Uh, every, every action, every step you take is followed on social media, on Twitter. Everything you say is representing a country behind you. Wow, to think, uh, to have that position and to take that lightly, uh, to take that even lightly, to, to think about possibly being fired just because you didn't take your job seriously. Wow, what about being ambassadors for the king of kings who owns every country in the world? Uh, don't let that truth become just a dull truth to your mind. 
We are ambassadors of the King of Kings. Walking around every step we take, every, every thought we have, every piece of clothing we put on, we are representing the King of Kings. Wow, you're a Christian? You said that word? You watched that movie? You, you, watch, you listen to that kind of music and you're, in, you're a Christian? Wow, we're ambassadors for Christ. We are going to be ambassadors in Mozambique for the King of Kings. We're representing him when we go to Walmart. Representing him when we're changing our tire. When you're waiting a little too long in the McDonald's drive-thru. I worked at McDonald's, so I can maybe say that. But uh, when you're waiting a little too long at drive-thru, do you keep your testimony? We're representing the King of Kings. Our body is God's temple. Treat it that way. We ought to surrender our will because the first reason our body is God's temple. The second reason why we ought to surrender our will to him is that because our life isn't ours, it's we are bought with a price. Uh, I have a favorite drink. Uh, how many have uh, your favorite drink is uh, A&W, the root beer. How many like root beer? No one. Okay, thank you. I love that. What about Coca-Cola? We have Coca-Cola. All right, amen. All right, what about Pepsi? All right, sounds good. Well, I would take root beer any day over all those if I had a choice. But uh, if I'm trying to be healthy, I'll drink water. Uh, when, I, when I go to the store and I buy that uh, maybe $2.99 two liter of root beer, all right, that is all mine. It's not my wife. She doesn't even like pop, so I won't give it to her. And uh, I'm going to have to use the word soda when I go down to the south, make sure they understand this illustration. Uh, but uh, here we're pop, right? Uh, so I buy that, and uh, it's all mine. All right? I can share it if I want. Uh, the decision is up to me. All right? So when we, uh, when we buy something uh, that we like, it is all ours. You pay it in full. Well, think about this, that Jesus paid for us in full. He bought us all. It is his decision what our lives ought to be. It is his choice. It is all up to him. He bought us. He paid the full price. He didn't pay $2.99. He didn't pay $1 billion. He paid his own blood. He shed his own blood on the cross. Look at verse 20. It says, we are not our own, verse 19, for ye are bought with a price. Wow, that price was the blood of Jesus Christ, his own death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. He paid the full price. Well, he paid it all in full. Salvation is free. Anyone who wants it can simply take it because it's up to him. It's not up to us. It's up to him. He bought us. It is his decision if he wants to give it, to, uh, to, to throw it out the window. If you buy a book and you want to burn it in a, in a fire, in a bonfire, just watch it explode. It's all yours. It's your decision. Wow, Jesus Christ, our life is all up to him. He bought us. Therefore, we ought to surrender our will, our lives, our decisions, our choices, our job, our families to Christ. Because we are not ours. We are his. Uh, We are bought with a price. Four different applications. I'm going to move on to the next point. Four different applications this ought to play in our life. Our clothes, our movies, our music, and our friends. If, If God has all of us, does that play a part in these four categories in your life? I like, I like watching Andy Griffith. Anyone like Andy Griffith here? Learn lessons from Barney Fife, maybe. Um, I love watching movies, uh, if they're good movies. Uh, but do the movies you put in front of your eyes, are those, are those holy as well? Are you taking in consideration that my body is God's temple right now while I'm watching this movie? While I'm watching this YouTube video, while I'm, while I'm considering this, while I'm making my mind think on this video, Are you considering that you are still God's temple? The movies that you watch, what about the music? The music that you listen to. When I was about 14, 15 years old, I was uh, still developing my music. I I listened to country music and pop music and any kind of music that was was not godly, basically. Uh, And God used that. I remember one day uh, just constantly having to skip skip to the next song. I'm like, this, this doesn't sound good. And I skipped the next song. And I skipped the next song. And I skipped the next song. And I threw away the whole genre of music. You know, because it wasn't pleasing to God. What about your music, young people, especially? Music has spiritual power. I'm going to touch on this as I move on. Uh, that David, even without playing, without singing any words, 
cause an evil spirit to depart from Saul. David, it says that the evil spirit, when David played the harp, that the evil spirit departed from him. And that Saul was refreshed and was well. Wow, not because of any words. Don't tell me that the music, uh, that only the words are important. It's the, it's the style, the rhythm. Everything goes into it. Is your music honoring to God? What about the clothes that you wear? The clothes that we wear should not cause other people uh, to doubt if we are Christians or not. We should not be trying to fit in with Hollywood. Hollywood should not be our role model uh, for clothing. All right, uh, We should not be trying to seek to wear all these mini skirts and inappropriate things that look like everyone else in the world. Uh, God, God has a wardrobe style, a, a dress code for us that we ought to look for in the Bible. Uh, we ought to look at godly people, uh, how they dress. Are our clothes holy? And then our last thing is our friends. What about the fellowship that you have with other people? Are they, are they encouraging you and challenging you in the Lord? Your friends ought to be holy. Uh, we ought to surrender our will to God. Uh, why? Because our body is God's temple and we are bought with a price. I hope that you surrender your will to Him and therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Surrender your life to the mission field. Surrender your life to whatever God has for you. God will always have what's best for you. The the next reason, next way, not only surrendering our will to God, but also supplicating. Supplicating is another way that we can glorify God tonight in our body and in our spirits. We had, I had, when I when I started out praying, well, that sounds weird, but when I started out praying, actually not just praying for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but when I got my own prayer list, I prayed for four things, and uh, each of those four things got answered. Wow, that was exciting, and I started to build that prayer list, and, and it has been so encouraging to see the different prayer requests that God has answered as I prayed, prayed over and over and over again for those four, four prayer requests that I had, and then God just kept building that prayer list. And I'm so thrilled to see how God answers prayer in our lives. It's such a simple thing. Just getting down on our knees or even driving in our car as we're working and just talking. Talking to God. Uh, That's all prayer is. Talking to God. Uh, Conforming your will more to the will of the Creator. That's what prayer is. Uh, there's, uh, there's different things uh, that I'd like to share here. Uh, how to pray. I, have, uh, I like alliteration, uh, so I have several different S's here. Uh, don't get confused with uh, the big other points uh, with the S's, but uh, how to pray. How to pray. I heard this acronym once. Uh, A-C-T-S. All right? Acts. All right? Like the book. All right? Acts is how you ought to pray. Uh, adoration. Uh, Start out adoring your Savior. Start out worshiping the King of Kings, uh, the God that you serve, that He loved you, that He sent His Son to die on the cross for you. Start adoring Him uh, with adoration and worship. Uh, So that's A. What about C? Confession. I hope they have a contrite heart and confession to your Savior. Every time you come to God, they have a broken heart. You have a broken heart about sins that you maybe don't even know about. David prayed that cleanse thou me from secret faults. Oh, you got to have a contrite heart in confession to your Savior. What about T, Acts? We're talking about an acronym for Acts. A-C-T. Uh, T, uh, you got to have thankfulness in your prayers. You know that we are constantly in oh, disobedience when we are praying. You know that? That we are constantly disobeying while we are praying. Why? Because we don't thank the Lord as He says we ought to. It says every time, almost, almost all the times that prayer is mentioned in the Bible, it says, with Thanksgiving. Do you do that? Do you do that? It says pray with thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Wow. Paul mentions it all the times that he says praying with thankfulness. Wow. We ought to pray with thanksgiving. You, you ever forget that part while you're praying? You go down and ask God for another thing, but you still haven't thanked him for the, all the prayer requests he already answered. Uh, have, you, have you thanked God? When you're praying, we ought to have thankfulness and praise, uh, thankfulness in our prayers. And then S, we're talking about Acts once again. S, supplication. Taking those those requests that you have before God and asking God. 
Notice that it wasn't just getting down on your knees, I beg you, Lord, once again, I'm five in the morning, remember, uh, I'm asking for that new Ferrari once again, uh, just came out on the market, I'm asking once again, and you come later on in the day, and you ask for, I'm asking for that Ferrari, Lord, once again, I'm asking once again, you, you're faithful, you're just like that unjust widow who just kept knocking on the door, and finally upset, and finally he gave her the prayer request, well, we're not talking about that, we're not asking for something like a Ferrari, a new job, uh, that is, a million dollars a, a minute. Uh, we're, 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 praying, we're praying for things that are spiritual. We're praying for things that are spiritual. Open up your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. Am I speaking too fast tonight? I wrote in all caps slow down on my top of my notes. 1 John chapter 5. We have one of the greatest, greatest two promises in the Bible in this chapter. I love sharing verse 13 uh, with, with new believers or with anyone who is doubting their salvation. That, uh, that these things have I written unto you, 1 John 5, 13, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. If you put your faith in Christ tonight, you can know. You know without a doubt that you have eternal life. Wow, that's a great promise. I love, that's a freebie if your pastor, uh, if your pastor's probably told you that before. But love uh, to share that verse with others. Uh, share that with those who are doubting their salvation. But the verse that I wanted to share, verse 14, it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. I had uh, someone, I had someone, I was out in Florida, and uh, I said, uh, right before I left, I was talking to him. I said, hey, do you have any prayer requests? And he said, yes, yes, thank you for asking. Uh, I've been wanting that new truck that came out. I've been wanting that new truck that came out. I kind of I kind of laughed as I left. Uh, once again, uh, that being said, with the Ferrari and the new truck, uh, look at that phrase in verse 14. If we ask anything according to his will. According to his will. What does it say? It says 100%. It says, and if we know that he hear us, so we know that he's going to hear us, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desired of him. Wow, 100%. Every time, if you ask God according to his will, and you know he hears up because it's according to his will, every time he's going to answer that. Wow, what does that mean? You pray for more humility. You pray for more patience. Pray for more Christ-likeness. Pray for more prayer life. Pray for meditating on God's word more. Pray for obeying God's word more. Pray for seeking the glory of God more in your life and not your own. Pray according to the will of God. That's going to be answered every time. What about pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth more labors into his harvest? How many more missionaries would be on the field right now? If we are praying for them faithfully. Wow, how many more people, how many more pastors would there be? How many more people would be saved if we would be faithful in praying for them? Wow, how more like Christ would, be, would we be like tonight if we were praying more spiritual prayers? Instead of praying for those things, just that new job, that uh, more money, a new car. Wow, I'm not saying those things are necessarily wrong, but pray spiritual prayers. Pray spiritual prayers. I think it's great. Don't, don't stop it. We ought to pray for people's health. We ought to pray for people's health. But don't do it to the neglect of praying spiritual prayers. Pray the prayers of Paul. Paul said to the Philippians, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more, in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may prove those things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ. Wow, what about the prayers of David? Praying his heart out to God. Wow, hear my prayer, O oh Lord. Wow, don't hide your face from me. Wow, I'm in trouble. Speedily deliver me, Lord. Wow, do we pray the prayers of David? Do we pray scripture? Do we pray those things that God has commanded us to pray for? Pray for our government. 1 First, First Timothy chapter 2. It says that uh, I try to alliterate my prayer schedule. I pray for... 
On Tuesdays, Timothy 2, uh, for 1 Timothy 2, uh, what does it say there? Uh, it says uh, that, I, I, did I mention it was, that was Tuesdays? That's why I said Timothy 2. So Tuesdays, I try to alliterate the schedule. Um, so uh, it says that I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings. You know that means President Biden? You know that means our vice president? You know that means uh, for all those in authority, it says, for the teachers in this school at Woodcrest? You know it means your pastor? You know it means the deacons in this church? You know it means all those in Minnesota who are state representatives standing for the truth, who believe the word of God? You know there's a couple of those people who believe the word of God and are standing for the truth? Are we praying for them? Well, wow, pray spiritual prayers. Pray spiritual prayers. Uh, what, is, uh, what does James 5.16 say? If we just get down on our knees and pray for those prayers, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Wow, we can change a lot of things in this world that we don't like. Change things in this world. Well, we can see countries move. We can see kings. The, the, heart, uh, the Bible says that the, the, heart of the, um, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Wow, I had an evangelist that said he got down on his knees and kept praying that verse because his father-in-law, who was not saved, would not give his blessing to allow him to marry his daughter. Or to, yeah, to allow him to marry his daughter. And he kept praying and kept praying and kept praying. And finally one day he said, hey, I want to let you know I give my blessing. I'll let you marry my daughter. He just kept praying that verse. Wow, do we pray scripture? Pray spiritual prayers. Are we supplicating for God for eternal things that when we look back and say, wow, because God answered that, that, that person got saved. Not just because I answered that, I got that new job. Not just those kind of prayers. That's maybe fine to pray that, but not just those kind of prayers. Pray spiritual prayers. Pray for uh, more surrenderness to God's will, to pray more, to have more prayer answers. Wow, are we praying for that? I wanted to read this. That's why I stole one of these hymn books for a little bit. Uh, 437. It says, Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear. To him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care. And wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. May I thy consolation share, till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting pride. I'll shout while passing through the air, farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. Wow, do you take that time in your day to pray? Do you give God an hour of your day? Do you give God time in your day to pray? We have time to check our phone, to check emails. I love checking emails. I, my wife uh, saw my face uh, uh, jump. I was about to jump off the couch uh, every time I hear an email because that means maybe another meeting for deputation. So I'll, I'm constantly on my phone, constantly. I spend probably most, more than any teenager in this room on my phone every day because uh, I'm trying to call and uh, try to schedule emails and uh, send out emails and schedule meetings. So I, my, my heart jumps out and I jump around in the house when I get a new meeting or I, uh, when I hear an email. Uh, so I love that. But do we have a time to check our email, check a, you know, exercise, we eat dinner, breakfast, lunch? Do we have a time to pray though? Do we have a time to pray, get down on our knees and beg God for that person's salvation? Beg God. For that person, did you ever give up? How long did it take you to give up? How long did it take you? Did you give up like that unjust widow, that unjust judge, who, who that widow just kept coming and 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 kept coming. And, kept coming. and finally said, because it troubled, she troubled him. Because she was upsetting him and he was losing his patience, he finally gave it to her. Wow, do we do that with God? Just keep coming and 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 keep coming. Until God just says, fine, I'll give it to you. I was just waiting for you to keep coming. 
because I love you spending time with me. What's the third way that we can glorify God in our body and our spirit tonight is to soul win. To soul win. You know that, let's turn to Mark chapter 16, verse 15. I'm sure you can quote this verse. If not, memorize it. It only takes 30 seconds to memorize. So spend some time doing that. Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Wow, what about Romans 10, verse 13? Romans 10. 10, 13, and 14. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, if you're here tonight, if you haven't put your faith in Christ, God's waiting for you to call on Him to be saved. I hope that you do that tonight. Verse 14. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? What, what about all those 30 million in Mozambique? Who's going to tell them? I'm not going to. I'm going to spend the rest of my life. I'm going to wait till I'm buried. Until God changes my direction. I'm, my plan is to wait till I'm dead to stop preaching the gospel in Mozambique. I'm not going to be able to reach a million people. Maybe. Who's going to reach the other 30 million people? Who's going to reach those Muslims? That's, that's only going to get bigger. And if they keep believing the way that they do, then they're just going to, all those youth are just going to convert to Islam and, and believe in a lie the rest of their lives. Who's going to tell all those people? Who's going to pray for more people to go? Who's going to, in this community, in Fridley, go and, and go across the street and tell that neighbor you haven't told about the gospel? You look at someone drowning. You look at someone drowning, we just watch them. And we don't hop in. You say, I don't know how to swim. I, I never received swimming lessons. Well, I, didn't, I never received swimming lessons. I know how to swim. Well, if you just jump in and doggy paddle... You might look like a fool, but you, you saved someone's life. Why don't you jump in? You never shared the gospel with someone. Why don't, you, why don't you get over your pride? You might stumble over your words. Why don't you hop in and tell that person that God's been laying on your heart? Everyone knows one person tonight. Are you going to tell them this week? If, if, not, who, who's gonna, if not you, who's going to tell them? I don't want to hear at the end of my life anyone. When I had an open door, I had a free two hours. And I wasn't doing anything. I just wasted it. I'm not saying it's wrong to, to take a nap or whatever, to waste time, in a sense, to rest. Uh, we did that last night, playing board games, uh, just having fun. But you have two hours of doing nothing. Oh, why don't you just call up someone? Go across the street. Share the gospel with your coworker when you're, when you're on lunch break. Oh, who's going to do that? With your grandkids, your grandparents, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your dog, I don't care. Whoever, share the gospel. Actually, I mentioned my dogs. Maybe some of you actually know. Pastor might actually know our dog and a couple of you here, Casper. Uh, I call him the gospel dog because every time we go out, we bring some tracks. And people, because he's so cute, everyone loves talking to him. And then when they talk to him, we give him the gospel. We, we give him a track. How do you, do you do that? Do you make a way in your life to reach those people that you can in Fridley? To grow this church? Do you already have VBS or is it passed? It's coming up? Oh, just had it. Wow, follow up with those people that came. Pray for more kids for next year. What about pray for all those families that came for their first time? Maybe they can come to this church. Wow, are we doing what we can? How shall they hear without a preacher? Why, why won't you be that preacher? I'm not a man. Well, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter. You can be, you can be an 80-year-old. Uh, you can be an elderly lady. 
And you can be a preacher to someone in your neighborhood. You can be a preacher to your grandkid. You won't be able to ever preach in this pulpit if you stay Baptist. I hope not. But you can preach to the people in your community. Find a scheduled time. One hour a week. One and a half hours a week. Just go out and knock on some doors. Invite some people to church. Sit down with someone on the phone and share the gospel. God will bless that. Well, it says so sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. Wow, what about if we sow every day? If we're so busy about the gospel, so busy about praying, so busy about surrendering every day to our life. Wow, what about what's going to happen to that when we enter heaven? All the rewards, wow, is worth it. It was worth the embarrassment. It was worth the laughter. There's people in China, people in, in Korea who are getting whipped because they, they won't give up their faith, who are, who are willing to still evangelize and, and go underground to have church and bring more people, if, if that's what it means, if it means their life. Are you willing to, to use the rest of your 30 years, use the rest of your 50 years for Christ? Wow, oh, it's so short. Who's going to tell those people in Mozambique? Let's pray tonight. Dear God, thank you so much for your goodness. I pray for your blessing, God. I pray that you'll uh, help us to glorify you in our body and our spirit, God, to surrender, to supplicate in the soul. And God, help us to do these things. Help us to obey your will. Thank you so much for your goodness, God. Uh, we pray for your blessing now. I pray you'll bless the invitation, God, if there's anyone here. Uh, God, if there's anyone here uh, who has not made that decision to trust in Christ their Savior, uh, would you slip up your hand tonight? I know Pastor would love to help you out. Just slip up your hand if you're, if you're, if you're 10 years old, if you're, if you're 40 years old, you've, your first time here, your 30th time here, and you, you just want to know more about what Pastor Portman has been preaching about. You want to hear more about what this, all this joy is about, about people who, who know Christ and, and they, they just seem so happy. Wow, I want that tonight, Lord. You just raise your hand. Uh, anyone here tonight? If not, that's a privilege. If everyone here is trusting Christ as Savior, how amazing. I pray you'll believe with all these believers here tonight, God, that they'll put their, their lives in your hands, that they'll live for you, that, they'll, that you'll give them gracious opportunities to share the gospel. Help them to be obedient and completely in your own. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much. Now, we pray for your blessing now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Luke. Would you stand with me, please, with your heads bowed? We have been treated to quite a challenge this evening. Surrender. To supplicate. To be a soul winner. In just a moment, the piano will begin to play softly and just want to make and give you an opportunity perhaps to either where you're at or at this altar just to ask God to give you a better sense of your responsibility to reach the lost around you to pray more urgently fervently to surrender your will to his. How about you? Very practical, challenging message. What God have you do tonight? Father, we thank you for working in our hearts and thank you for the challenge that has been set before us this evening. We thank you for Brother Luke and Selena. We ask your blessing upon them as they 
travel throughout the states in these coming weeks and months, give safety and health to them. And uh, Lord, I pray that churches will be open to having them in to present this call of God upon their lives and may they raise their support quickly. And Lord, I pray your blessing upon the thoughts, the message, the challenge to our hearts here this evening. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you, Brother Luke. Uh, I need to write that uh, slow down on the top of my notes, too. I have been asked for 20 years to slow down. It hasn't happened yet. So uh, anyways, uh, thank you. That was a blessing. I'll let you uh, slip out so you can be at your table if you uh, want to be there before everybody else goes. The uh, offering plates will be available, and so I hope that you will be willing to um, uh, give a love offering, uh, all of which will go, of course, to the Nolte's as they begin their deputation uh, travels. And uh, so if you can be a blessing to them, that would be a blessing to them and to the Lord. And so thank you so much for being here tonight. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. We are dismissed. God bless you.